Yeah, um, thank you. Thanks, everybody, for, 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 for joining this talk. Um, yeah, as the title says, I'm going to share the story of um, how, um, yeah, the, uh, about the origins of Apache Flink, uh, how it started as an academic uh, research project, not talking very much about that part, but then, like, how we moved it into, um, um, into the Apache Software Foundation and what we did to um, grow a community and uh, a few lessons learned about that. Um, First of all, a few words about what is Apache Flink to, to get the context right. Um, it is obviously an open source project of the uh, Apache Software Foundation. Um, the software is, uh, is, a, is a stream processor that processes data with low latency um, at scale. So it's a distributed system. You um, deploy it in a, in a cluster, and then it processes streams of data. Um, and it consists of APIs, obviously, to uh, define the the, the processing, the, the job that you want to run, and also the execution engine. It runs on clusters from various sizes, so you can run it on a single ma machine. You can also and deploy it on, on clusters to up to like a uh, couple of thousands of machines. And um, it has a very very active community um, and also um, helpful community. Um, what are the common use cases for Flink? So it's used for um, a typical stream processing applications like fraud detection, uh, anom anomaly detection, real-time analytics, machine learning, um, or just crunching data in a, in a streaming fashion in general. Um, the software Apache Flink is used by, uh, by many companies of various, uh, various different industries, such as um, uh, telcos, there is... Um, there is uh, um, uh, Retail. There is um, typical tech companies, uh, so it's really, really deployed uh, at at many, at many different companies. So, how that, did this all start? So, um, the software started out out as a, as an academic research project. Back then, it was called Stratosphere. Um, the project was funded by the uh, uh, German uh, Forschungsgemeinschaft, which is like the the German equivalent of the. Um, uh, NSF in the US, so it's a it's an, uh, government funded uh, institution to fund um, research projects, and the mission of the project was to to develop the next generation big data or big data analytics platform. And for that, back then the project started in 2010. We like did a little bit initial work before that. Um, so the goal back then was to. Um, develop a system that fuses MapReduce and uh, um, relational database technology. Uh, there were a couple of research groups involved, so this was a fairly big project, so uh, something like um, six, seven uh, PhD students, five professors, uh, a couple of master's students working, working on this, and it also got additional funding from, from uh, additional EU projects and uh, got by that connected in... Uh, to uh, different research uh, institutes uh, in Europe. And yeah, we also had a pretty good uh, uh, track record on scientific publications. So a couple of years later, um, the first generation of PhD students was about to leave, and um, we had a software that was um, in, in which we put like more than three years of uh, development um, of something like um, many, many, many people, so a couple of uh, person years went into the software. It was back then uh, state-of-the-art, uh, had a couple of very unique and distinguishing features, and back then we had already released it as uh, un under the Apache license. So we asked ourselves, okay, I mean, we, we had released it, but nobody actually used it. Um, so we asked ourselves, okay, how can we continue? And um, we didn't really want to abandon the project, just uh, give away like all these uh, three years of work and say, okay, that's it, we're going to do something else now. Um, so a natural uh, like thought was, okay, we'd like to continue that maybe as an, uh, as, as an uh, open source project. And there was another thought as well, so we were here in Berlin, uh, we like the city, we don't really want to move somewhere else. Um, and uh, it's not that easy to find another place or to, to find, find, find a job in Berlin, or back then at least, uh, where you could work on, on similar technology. So um, we, we thought, okay, maybe uh, let, let's try this, um, make, make, a, make a proper open source project out of Apache Flink, um, fund a, um, start, start a um, startup, and let's see how it goes. And that's basically what we did. And, um, so 
about the open source part, uh, releasing the software as open source. Well, releasing software as open source is one thing, but then there is a couple of other things to it, right? So you need to get people to use the software. You also want to build a community of people uh, contributing to the project and uh, make it attractive for people to contribute there. Uh, you have to figure out licensing, uh, setting up the infrastructure, um, the whole legal framework around an open source project. So all of that is uh, not that easy to not, e not that easy to do, and there's lots of challenges to tackle about that. And um, luckily, there is uh, op organizations, open source organizations, that exactly help to uh, ha help projects to to uh, uh, tackle all, so, all, mo most of these problems. And the Apache Software Foundation was kind of like a natural choice for us. And why is that? So. First of all, we got in touch with quite a few people from the Apache Software Foundation. Isabel Drost, the co-organizer of this, of this uh, conference here, was a guest lecturer at TU Berlin. Um, there were other um, Apache committers and members uh, in our research group. The Berlin Buzzwords Conference, that just uh, uh, was, was the uh, two days before this conference, um, had started here, which brought in many open source uh, people. Ted Dunning was one of the people we, we talked to. So we got a lots of exposure to, to uh, Apache folks here. Um, we also spoke at conferences. We also spoke uh, quite early at, um, at um, Bird and Buzzwords and other conferences um, about the Stratosphere project back then. Um, and of course, there were also lots of other projects in this big data processing domain that were hosted at the Apache Software Foundation. Like here, here are just a few of them. There is like, um, if I would put all the logos on there, uh, you wouldn't see any text anymore. So it's uh, like, this is basically like the, the home for most of these uh, kinds of projects. So therefore, the Apache Software Foundation was like the, uh, the first place uh, we were looking at. So how did we, how did we then start this? Um, yeah, so in 2014, in, uh, in April, we basically, um, um, or a bit before that, we um, made a proposal to the Apache Incubator, like the regular um, pro entering process for, for, for uh, code donations to become Apache uh, projects. So we uh, made a proposal to the Incubator, um, and in April, the Stratosphere code base um, basically entered the uh, ASF Incubator. Uh, we had to switch to the name. Stratosphere is uh, kind of like a very common name, so there's uh, lots of software and um, a, a few more software and also companies with that name. So we had to come up with another name, and uh, we decided to name, give, give the software the name Flink, which is name, German for Nimble and Swift. Um, and we came up with this cute uh, squirrel logo because it's a Nimble and Swift animal. And the initial committers were like the core stratosphere developers and um, the um, mentors from the Apache Software Foundation. Um, so in incubation, you, we, we did all the usual stuff. We basically set up the infrastructure, solved licensing in issues. Uh, we started growing the community, mostly from students that had already worked with us through these uh, EU project collaborations, uh, which was very, very helpful. So we already had uh, a couple of people contributing to the project that we then could make uh, committers. Um, and um, we had a pretty good start. First official release was then in August, and already in December, uh, Flink graduated to an OPG, uh, to a, to a top-level project. Um, in the same year, we also funded Data Artisans, the startup that I was talking about. It's based here in Berlin, a venture capital funded as usual. Um, and um, yeah, it was funded by the core, core Stratosphere team and then um, some of the Flink committers. Um, the initial goal of the company was basically we, we devoted like 100% of the resources towards uh, fostering Apache Flink. Uh, um, our goal was uh, basically make this a, like, a, like, a, like a visible project in the, in the uh, landscape, in the big data landscape. So our main goal was to grow a community around that, um, helping users, uh, mentoring con contributors, um, helping them to uh, become committers at some point, but also gaining mind share for this project. And of course, also developing Flink, adding new features, uh, fixing bugs, and so on. So how did we grow a community, or what did we do there? So back in 2014, um, we had a, the, the, the landscape of projects was kind of like competitive, it still is. Um, but we also saw that there is a clear need for, for, for the technology that the, the software was offering. 
Um, so there was a clear need for, for advanced big data analytics tools. And there's, there, there was and there still is lots of projects around. There's uh, probably most prominently Apache Spark. There's a couple of other projects in Power Lab and uh, also H2O. And uh, all of these projects were also backed by uh, some kind of um, companies or other, um, either big companies or also startups with lots of more funding than we had. We were here in Berlin, uh, where our money is not as flowing as freely as uh, in other places. And um, so we somehow had to compete um, with these organizations or with these uh, well, projects. When projects don't really compete, but still, it's a, you, you, you're trying to get mindshare, and if there's somebody else who has more mindshare, um, you, you, you think, OK, what can you do about it? So how, how did we approach this? Um, well, first of all, when you try to, um, get, try to get more mindshare for a project, you have to do a lot of talking. So you're speaking at conferences, meetups, you're uh, writing blog posts. Um, you try to find early partners and users that, then, that you can then help to also become evangelists for your software. And um, data artisans, the startup, um, started to quite early um, organize a Flink focus conference, Flink Forward. Um, we started here in Berlin. In, in April, we had the, the, the second edition in San Francisco. And um, in, this, in this event, we, of course, had people talk, giving talks about Apache Flink, how they use it. Uh, initially, these were mostly from academic partners so, um, and uh, academic uh, projects that they did with Flink. Uh, but we also organized hackathons and, and trainings to uh, show people how the system works. And back in these days, we already gained a few, few early adopters. ResearchGate, which is a, a company here from Berlin. King, which is from Sweden, Stockholm. Boyk Telecom in France. So we had a first, first early, early adopters of the software. Of the software. Um, however, it didn't really take off that well. Um, and um, we figured that is like we were comp kind of competing with others uh, on the very same. We, we tried to do this the, the same as, as, as other, other projects were doing. And uh, we often hear it, OK, this is an interesting software. It is, might have, like, te technology-wise, it might be advanced. But it is less mature. It has less adoption. And uh, at that point in time, we realized that better, being better at something doesn't really cut it. So unless you're really by 10x, by order of magnitude, better. Um, community and mindshare um, is, uh, makes, a lot, may, makes up a lot for uh, maybe not having the latest technology. And um, in general, it's easier to, to evolve technology than to grow a community. Um, so at that point in time, we also uh, figured, OK, stream processing is an interesting, interesting trend that, might, uh, that uh, we might, might go into. And we looked at the existing solutions, and they all had, uh, uh, had uh, significant drawbacks. And we thought, OK, this is something that we can do better. So at that point in time, we basically put uh, uh, our resources mostly in, in stream processing features. Back that, before that, it was mostly like batch processing. Um, and uh, at that point in time, we, uh, we noticed that this is really something that is, that is useful for many, for many users, because uh, we evolved the software in a way that we added features that no one else at that point in time had. And um, we also saw that this software now is, going, is, is, is being used for, for more uh, business-critical tasks. And also saw that people or companies who, who used the software um, let their, their, their employees contribute back to the projects. And um, in around that phase of the project, we, we uh, um, or the project, um, got some users like Alibaba, Netflix, and Uber, which are clearly um, big users um, that, that can give a statement about, uh, hey, we're using the software. Today, Apache Flink um, has more than 400 contributors. Uh, we have 38 con committers, um, about 10,000 downloads per month. And uh, last year, I think it was uh, among, the, among the top 10 projects of the Apache Software Foundation with the most mailing list traffic. Um, Flink runs, at, runs some of the world's largest stream processing applications today. Um, users funnel trillions of events per day through the software and, uh, and uh, use it to, to, to solve their data problems. So what are the lessons learned that we, uh, that we basically uh, took, took out of this? Um, 
first of all, going with the Apache Software Foundation was a really good choice for us um, because uh, it helped us in, very, in various ways. Uh, first of all, uh, you get um, legal protection. Um, it helps, of course, also with the exposure. But also there is like the, the, the people um, in the incubator that help you, that, uh, that uh, um, can, can share a lot of their experience, experience how to grow a community, what, what to do and what not to do. To, to attract people to good people uh, users and contributors to your project, so that was a uh, very helpful. Um, also, the initial community that we got through our uh, academic uh, roots and academia helped us. So we had already like the the, the Stratosphere software was used in multiple EU projects. So um, we had a, p a couple of contributors already through these collaborations early on. Growing a community, yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of talking um, as well. Um, but also what we found is that, it's, um, uh, that it was essential for Flink to find its right, right niche, so to say, like being in this stream processing niche, doing something that nobody else, uh, offering some, some features that nobody else offers, um, uh, being the first one, that of course also helps a lot. Um, Enterprise software is a very competitive space. Um, it's very hard for projects without full-time developers um, to build up a community, to have um, um, to, to, to convince people, like also companies, to use this software. Uh, since it's enterprise software, these your your natural users are companies who want to uh, who are asking, okay, who's who's backing this? Uh, community is a very very important part of that, but. Um, it is, we also heard a couple of times that it is uh, important that there is also some entity behind uh, or within the community, so w together with the community, um, that has a vested interest in, in, uh, in uh, growing, the, growing the community and, and helping the, the, the project. What are today's challenges? Yeah, so w we have to keep up with growing the community. Uh, maintaining a community is also a lot of work. Uh, so. Um, helping users, di discussing roadmap features, features that other uh, that, that uh, contributors want to uh, want to contribute, um, onboarding new committers, um, and then also finding this right balance of okay, um, user requests and driving a long-term vision for the project for the software. This is all uh, kind of challenging, and I think like um, the next talk, no, not the next talk, but the talk after that, um, we'll uh, hear something about how projects can, can, can cope with uh, uh, many contributors. So last, the last thing I would, would like to share, uh, working on open source is, is very, very rewarding. Uh, it's a fun way of developing, um, being in touch with the people who use the software. Um, they're hearing their ideas, how they want to, how they envision the software to, to, to evolve is, is, uh, is, is very nice. Um, and of course, it's also very rewarding to see that the software that you're working on is used in, a, uh, in many different places. Yeah, so um, this is the conference that I quickly spoke about. So we'll have uh, the next uh, edition in, in Berlin in September here, exactly at Kulturbrauerei, uh, in the beginning of September. So if this is something that you're interested in, um, uh, please sign up. And with that, I'd like to thank, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Fabian, um, for this interesting talk, especially if it's Berlin-based and from Stratosphere. So are there any questions? Oh, yeah, I see a lot. Good. My question would be, uh, how did you convince the big enterprises to uh, adopt uh, Flink, like you mentioned, uh, Airbnb, Netflix, and all those? Yeah. Whether purely because you had a f niche feature set compared to Spark streaming or other technologies, um, I think it in the so yeah, we did not really reach out to them. So for instance, for for Alibaba, we like uh, they they approached us and told us, okay, we're using your software, and um, I think what really um, uh, it was this not being better at something else, but being, be being slightly better at some, something that somebody else is doing who has uh, a bigger community. It was 
really this um, being able to do something that nobody else can do at that point in time. So it's really having these features. I mean, I didn't really go into the details of what Flink is doing, but having features like exactly once processing and event time process, event time semantics, this is something that no other stream processing, open source stream processing system back then could do. So I'm, I'm, my, my explanation is like that these features um, um, have help to, 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 to win these users for, for the software. You mentioned that you have a lot of mailing list traffic. And one thing that I hear a lot from new Apache projects is that mailing lists are a thing from the past and we should go move beyond them. Uh, I'm curious, did, were you already using mailing lists uh, as your main channel before you joined Apache or did you adapt to that for Apache? Um, so the development before that was mainly centered at Tubal and so I mean sure we had some communications with, with our also external contributors but they were not really I mean these were all project partners from, from academic projects so we had really not, not there, there was a mailing list but it was barely used um, yeah so I mean this mailing list thing was, was pretty new to us um, how, how, to, how to deal with that um, we get requests sometimes from users uh, to add something or to offer something like a Slack channel. But um, so far in the community, um, didn't really go into that. I'm, I'm not sure like, if, if I would get anything done if we would do that. OK, thank you very much, Fabian. And thank you, the audience. Thanks. <laughs>